right. My name's Martin. I'm 60 years of age and I've probably been a problem gambler most of my life. And my first experience of gambling was probably at school. Um, I wasn't very good in the classroom, disruptive and stuff like that. But uh, I started to learn how to throw a coin up against a wall. And, and, and that gave me a, an immediate competitive buzz to carry on like that way. And school dinner tickets was a free school dinner ticket, which funded that sort of early days of the gambling. I left school at 15, got a job in a factory, and the way I was brought up was in the spins, as, as they say. And getting to the pub and getting to the bookies was, that's you, you became a man. And and that was the, that was the thinking behind most young men at my age. Played a lot of football, amateur football at, at that time as well, which I, I wasn't too bad at. But I soon, I soon learned that um, I was going down a slippy spiral um, when I worked and I got paid on a Friday, handed my dig money in and I lost all my money on the Friday afternoon. And I was asking my mum for my dig money back to get me over the weekend. The two or three weeks prior to maybe knowing that you were getting a wage or the two or three days, your mind was irrational thinking. It was all about how am I going to pull a fast stroke here to get gambling with, with my wages and thinking that I'm going to win and go home with hundreds of money. And it was in dream world at, at the early days of gambling before it became a real problem. I'd lost a couple of business. I, I, I'd progressed. I had a couple of businesses. I became unemployable because of other matters, theft and all this kind of stuff. So I had a pub in 1999. In 2001, I'd gambled it, I'd lost it, but that was the whole family's income. Mm-hmm. Borrowing money off friends and family and banks and Provident, everywhere I could source income, I would try and get it. <clears throat> but the real problems developed with the High Street bookie brought into the, the shop, the mini casinos as are known now, was four FOB team machines. And when I was in, usually having a wee punt on the football or whatever it was, I got introduced to these machines. And they were fascinating. I was fascinated. I was hooked instantly on demo play, free spins, competition time, cup of coffee, chocolate biscuits. This was a, this was a whole new experience. And the pace of that, usually you'd have to wait two or three minutes for a horse race finishing or, or a football match would be 90 minutes or whatever it would be. This came the instant buzz hit, and that's why they were known as a crack cocaine. And you could lose up to a hundred pound in four seconds. And then at my worst, I would go. I would start work at five o'clock in the morning. I was a taxi driver by this time. The pub had gone. Everything. My wife and my family had tidied that mess up. Um, thousands of pounds, and I was ever so grateful. And I would never do it again. And all these great promises. But once things started becoming comfortable again, I, I, I'd went to Gamblers Anonymous and I had become um, relieved that I'd found people who were, a, were like me, messed up with gambling. And uh, I got a great welcome at any meeting I went to at the beginning, the early days and stuff like that. And I was in and out of that for a couple of years. I never got any great length of time, but what? For a few months at a time, it would, it would help the finances home, coming coming into the family home. And then after a couple of months, you would go and do it again, and you would have to go home and tell your wife and family that you've done it again. And you, I couldn't believe that I would do it again. Every day was a fight. Sometimes I would have to go out in the taxi and I would have no fuel, I would have no float, and, uh, and I would have to wear that mask that everything was all right. Well, well, everything was crumbling around about me. That continued for years upon years. Um, a couple of months here, a bit of freedom. We go into Gamblers Anonymous, and then Gamblers Anonymous made me feel I wasn't getting anywhere. Probably, as people said in the rooms, I wasn't doing it right. But I didn't know what I wasn't doing right. I sort of wasn't too keen on the idea of handing on my life and my will over to a higher power and God was mentioning quite a lot of things and, and quite a lot of times I had to mention that I had gambled while I was in Gamblers Anonymous and the anxiety that caused, that was 
causing on me prior to a meeting was pretty horrendous that I didn't want to put my hand up and say I've been gambling again and I'd get I, I would feel worthless even at a gambler's anonymous meeting that I couldn't even declare it. It, it was quite bad. And that made me stop going for a while. And and that continued for years upon years. 